Okay, we'll have a look now at some of the additional equipment that you'll need for your uh, resuscitation. We have purpose-built kits for um, endotracheal uh, resuscitation if required, and they should have on the front a list of what's uh, in the kit, and they should be sealed and dated uh, ready for use so that you know that they are clean and ready to go. The second kit is for our umbilical um, venous catheterization. Um, so it's set up for an emergency, but it has everything that you can actually do a, a catheterization in an emergency uh, setting. So once again, they need to, they've got a list of what's included and they need to be sealed and dated so that you know that they are clean. And our final kit is a pneumothorax kit. It has two sets of um, uh, items for pneumothorax aspiration. Uh, again, it's got a label on the front and should be sealed and dated so that you know that it's clean and ready to go. We need to have a backup for our um, T-piece ventilator in case we get a, a systems failure. So our, obviously our, our backup would be our bag and mask, our trusty bag and mask. We need to make sure that our, there's a, a little valve in there, so it's a duckbill valve, and you need to make sure that that opens and closes. The other thing we need to check is that our blow-off works. Now this states that it blows off at 35 centimeters of water, and we need to see movement and hear a noise as we compress. Finally, to check that there are no leaks, we connect that up to a, a gas source. Um, turn that on, up, no. six liters per minute. Our cylinders have enough uh, gas flow in them. And you can see the reservoir, which is a 600 mil oxygen reservoir, uh, is actually blowing up. And that will indicate that, in fact, there aren't any leaks there as well. You should have a variety of sizes of masks that will fit both on the T-piece of uh, the warmer or on the bag and mask. And just to ensure that uh, they're three different sizes at least um, and that they're in good condition, not perished, uh, that the, the brim is nicely padded, uh, in particular if you have a anatomical shaped mask. Uh, they can be uh, quite hard. So we have the three here, preterm baby or average baby and a large baby. We have here a neonatal stethoscope, which would be required for us to um, auscultate the baby's heart rate. Um, it's got a, a smaller diaphragm and a smaller dome, especially for uh, the newborn. Um, when using then the ear pieces should be facing forward and uh, the, the dome or the diaphragm must be rotated the right way so that you can actually hear the baby's heart rate. It's very important. The most recent guidelines suggest that a three-lead ECG is more effective uh, in picking up the heart rate than uh, palpating the baby's umbilicus or auscultating the baby's um, chest. Um, and certainly in terms of the oxygen saturation in a brand new baby, it may pick up the heart rate a little bit more quickly. But not every organization would have those available. So uh, again, it needs to be one that can pick up a, a baby's uh, heart rate. And it doesn't need to be complicated. It really just needs to be able to pick up the heart rate um, in, in a major resuscitation, but none of these should be used in preference to, you know, a three-lead ECG shouldn't be used in preference to an oxygen saturation. There are a number of varieties of um, oxygen saturation machines. We've got one of them here, and we've also got the inbuilt um, oxygen saturation in the, the Panda. But whichever brand that is used, it's, it's important that you become familiar with it. It is also important to have the appropriate size um, probe for the uh, oxygen saturation machine um, so that you get the transmitter and the receiver on either side of the baby's limb. 
uh, of course we're going to in a brand new baby use the right limb for uh, the right arm um, as a preductal measurement you can in fact use the strap head if you feel that there's too much light getting in and interfering with your signal you can use a strap head to actually occlude that light the most recent guidelines suggest that a three lead ECG is more accurate in detecting a good heart rate than either a um, saturation in the early stages of a baby's life or uh, in fact auscultating or palpating because of the inaccuracies uh, of individual use. So it may well be that you've got a three litre ECG available, but it shouldn't be used in preference to an ECG, uh, um, a s oxygen saturation. You must always have the oxygen saturation available. It's important to keep our baby warm during uh, resuscitation, so occluding any drafts that there might be, um, perhaps keeping your baby away from a, um, a wide window, outside window. And in addition to the heater, we need um, pre-warmed wraps and something to actually dry the baby with um, that can be changed over for, for your dry wrap. A small or a preterm baby, perhaps those less than 32 weeks gestation or less than 1,500 grams, may need uh, more... Um, something extra to keep them warm and in fact we might have uh, we do have plastic wraps for those babies so if they're not dried they're actually placed inside the uh, the wrap it could be a little poncho type of wrap it could be this uh, some people will use bubble wrap um, but the baby's placed inside while it's still uh, wet um, keeping the face outside and uh, it gives you opportunity to keep the baby warm, a bit like a, a warm um, a greenhouse. We need to document our um, process, that, uh, you know, the whole resuscitation. And it is important that the whole timeline, a complete timeline, is actually recorded. Some places will have a code blue record that is started as soon as possible after the code blue is called. Um, in some areas, uh, we'll only use a like a progress sheet, a, a patient in, uh, an inpatient sheet. Uh, but it's important to have a date and a time that it started, and then a time for every step in the resuscitation. And of course, we've got to remember that we're protecting ourselves from um, secretions and, and splashes. So we have our personal protective uh, equipment. We have gloves after we've uh, cleaned our hands. We've got a, it's actually sterile plastic um, apron. And of course, if you're anticipating any uh, splashes as protecting the eyes, even if you wear glasses, uh, you can actually use a face shield as well.